All right, here's a rare one we'll never see on Barn Find Hunter. We've never seen it before, we'll probably never see it again. You know, you go to a junkyard and you see, you know, Chrysler K cars and front wheel drive GM things and crashed up Toyota Camrys. And then you come to a place like this and it's filled with cool cars. And that's because of this man, Estes. I met Estes in 92 when I was doing the PR for the Mazda GTP team. And you were a rotary engine builder. Yes. And then when that team folded, he just kept on doing his own rotary engine. So you were an early adopter of rotary engines. What got you into them? Uh, actually, I was working at a dealership in Charlotte um, and they asked all of us, they took on the Mazda dealership and they asked all of us who would want to work on the Mazdas and I was the only one out of 14 or 15 mechanics that was willing so they sent me to the training center and been working with Mazda ever since. It was going to be a whole career. So I mean I see a bunch of race cars, there's some over here, there's some back here, I see roll cages all over the place. What is it you do here? Do you, do you build race cars? We build and maintain race cars. We do everything except sit in them and drive them. If we could just walk around here, because you got cool stuff, man. Sure. So Miatas are your thing. How many do you figure you have? Uh, it's probably 75. <laughs> There's a hundred RX-7 sitting here. A hundred RX-7? Yes. Now which gen? First gen? First and second. No thirds. Mostly no thirds. They're hard to come by and expensive. So these are these like race cars that can be used again, or is that history? Yeah, actually, this was one of my rental cars, and the last the last time I rented it, my driver blew up the engine, and that was about the time I decided to slow down. Drop an engine in it, clean it up, mm -hmm. ready to go. So are these pretty much parts cars that are back here. Pretty much parts cars. Most of the stuff that I've got here was to keep the race cars running. You still have that Alpha here, the. Zagato? Uh, yeah, let me find it. <laughs> so here's one of the interesting sports cars that Estes has. It's an Alfa Romeo, and I think it was called an Alfa Junior. This is, the body was by Zagato, which was a rare, you know, it was a body company in Italy. Very rare in the States. I think I have two friends that own these. Keith Martin at Sports Car Market, and I think Lowell Paddock has got one. Uh, so they'll be excited to see this. Sadly, the, the front end on this thing is, is torn up so bad that you'd have to be a pretty good fabricator to rebuild it uh, out of, out of uh, aluminum, I guess. It's got an aluminum hood, maybe aluminum doors, but I can see the rest of this is steel, but a rare car. And so if you're an Alpha enthusiast, you should be excited, but then know that it was, it's been sold and it's waiting for the new owner to pick it up. So day late and a dollar short. So is that your first race car? That's my first race car. Well, let's go take a look at that. So you had Corvair's- My first attempt at welding also. So how long have you had this? 72 or three. So that's your first welding? Probably. The doors were homemade around a tree or aluminum. I made them, that was my one of my first attempts at fabrication. Isn't that something? So you lightweight? Back then the rule said that you had to have the original uh, door hinges so I did, they were, they were uh, tie wrapped to the uh, roll cage. <laughs> so this was a stock Corvair, where did you race it? Any SCCA events, mostly at Charlotte. Back in the day, there were uh, four different SCCA regions that ran at Charlotte. <laughs> Gosh, I don't know, five or six years, I only ran at Charlotte. There were so many events that I could, you know, I could just run at Charlotte. And so what did you do to the motor in it? Was it pretty stock or just modified? No, it was fully modified for racing. Last time I drove it was at Chimney Rock Hill Climb and would have been in uh, 93, 92, 93. So you drove this thing up for many years? Yeah. Yeah, wow. Well, you got a lot of old race cars here. There's a lot of roll, car, roll bar tubing on your property. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. What does is, what is a rotary motor go for these days to have it rebuilt? To you know, too much. Really? Probably a minimum of about $6,000, 6500 bucks now. Wow. So it wasn't viable anymore for me to try to keep the rotary, you know, as a business. So, so this is more RX-7s than, than most of our viewers will see for the rest of their lives. They're all here on this piece of property. Jeez. 
That was one of my cars. You raced that one? I raced that one, crashed it at Charlotte hard. Really? And uh, the tech guy said, well, that car is a write-off. And it just so happened that the very next weekend, another region was having a race at Charlotte. Friday, I come pulling in with that car, and the tech guy just shook his head. That, that, was, that was a long week. You worked a lot of hours. I worked a lot of hours. Jeez. The, the problem was that, that was the illest handling car. I, I did it to prove a point to the tech guy, but that car was scary, especially in the banking. That oh, car man. was scary, and that's why it got parked. Let's look at that Corvair on the, that we saw on the way here. Okay. Today's sponsor is Consumer Cellular. They reached out to us because they, they dig barn finds, but they also dig barn find people like you. They know the money that you save each month on your cellular plan, you could invest in your barn find. New wheels, tires, rebuild that motor. It's a no brainer. So to save money for your next project car, check out the link in the description below. That's a super rare Le Mans convertible. Really? Yeah, I bought this as a, uh, I bought this as a uh, parts car from the GTO. Mm -hmm. but this is a factory Sprint 6 overhead cam. Yeah. And they converted it to an automatic, but it was it still has the pedals in it. I don't know if it was a factory three-speed or four-speed. I need to do the history search on it. Jay Leno's got one of these. Really? And he's got the high-performance version with a four-barrel, yeah. Full exhaust, heavy, heavy use suspension. That's what this is. You still got what? the six in there? Yeah. All right, here's a rare one. We'll never see on Barn Find Hunter. We've never seen it before. We'll probably never see it again. Overhead cam, six cylinder, four barrel carburetor. They made them in a, in a uh, standard version, which maybe is what this is, and a high performance version with like all sorts of tricked out parts that Jay Leno has been searching for one and finally found a one owner car. Wow, isn't that something? That's a rare beast. It's pretty cool. Yeah. We came to Estes' yard because I knew there were a lot of Mazdas. What I didn't know, there was going to be any Corvairs. I don't know if in Barn Find Hunter, over the nine years we've been shooting the program, if we've ever seen almost every example of a Corvair in one spot. We have an early edition that happens to be a wagon. A later edition, which happens to be a convertible with a stick shift. We have a two-door hardtop, and we have a van. I guess what we're missing here is the pickup truck version of the van and a four-door. But you know what? Not, not bad. In all the years of Barn Find Hunter, we've probably only seen one more Lakewood station wagon. And I thought, well, because it's here, and it seems to be in pretty sound shape, maybe we should see what a car like this is worth. So we got on the, the Haggerty price guide and looked up this, the VIN number, and the VIN number tells us it's a 1961 Corvair, very early car. I think maybe the second year, I'm not sure. If you're a Corvair person, don't send me hate mail. Uh, it's got a 145 uh, cubic inch engine, 80 horsepower, one, uh, two one barrel carburetors, and it's got an automatic on the dashboard. So in concourse condition, if this car were perfect, it'd be worth $20,900. One step down in number two, excellent condition, 16,300 in good condition, nine grand. And number four, fair, 4,500. This is below fair because even fair is a running car. I, you know, Estes says this one runs, but if you could pick this up for a couple of grand, get it up on jack stands in your garage, clean it out, clean all that vegetation inside there out. I bet this would not be a terribly expensive restoration to, uh, to pull off. And you know what, you don't need to put a new paint job on and stuff. Just clean this up, wax it up, and enjoy it as is. This one is a late model Corvair, and this is the hot rod. If you were looking for a, a, a performance Corvair, you'd get the second generation, which is what this is, and all those weird handling characteristics were, were taken care of by then. Sadly, this is the car that Ralph Nader uh, put it into. They had all those problems solved. This one is a Corsa. A Corsa had the big motor, not the turbocharged motor, had the 140 horsepower motor. This one's got a wooden steering wheel, factory option. It's got a, a manual gearbox with an optional wooden shift knob. And if you come back here, this one though has been modified. It's got one big four barrel Carter AFB carburetor on there. Somebody's adapted it on here. So this was a high performance car. Uh, I don't know what the horsepower is now. These cars did quite well in SCCA road racing. 
the, the Achilles on this was this fan belt. That this fan belt went from being on this plane to making a couple of turns to turn this engine fan to keep the engine cool, the air-cooled motor. It always turned out that Corvairs might be leading an e-production race, and near the end, that fan belt would break and the Porsches would win. Now, since then, Corvairs have been modified, so you don't have this convoluted fan belt style. Now they have a, a more traditional type of cooling fan. But back in the day, this probably could have won a national championship if that belt hadn't been here. All right, so what the heck am I looking at? This is a 66 Corvair Ultravan. Th this was actually a manufactured vehicle? Yes. They manufactured 530 something. They had yeah. Corvair powertrains bought, you know, directly from GM. So on GM the, didn't make this? GM did not make this. It was made by an independent company, but the Ultravan is the only non-Chevrolet manufactured vehicle that the Corsa Club of America recognizes as a Corvair. You got a, a Corvair engine, it's got a Corvair dashboard, Corvair steering wheel. I don't know if it's got a Corvair front end on it or not. Does not. This one, this one has got the um, 140 engine in it. Doesn't look like it has any more. Well, yeah, it does. It's on, it's, it's. The motor's it's inside. The, further. And that's a generator. Wow. Huh. So it's all aluminum bodies, you can see. All aluminum. The so, guy that designed it was a uh, aircraft engineer for the military. When he came out, uh, he decided to, to build these things and they loosely resemble an airplane fuselage. So this had a bedroom, a kitchen, living area. What do you think the horsepower was on this thing? Well, it's 140. 140, I wonder how. The standard was a 110 that had two carburetors. This one does have the high performance engine. And I wonder what, how fast you go down the road with one of these. I've never actually driven one of these yet. Probably mm. not too fast. I love it. It would be a great restoration project. Wow. It will be restored. It, it, that's that's not that's not a, a I'll get around to it story. It uh -huh. will be restored. I just wasn't ready for the project, but I knew if I didn't get it. That I, get, I get it. Yep, I get it. Now I love it. On Barn Find Hunter, I don't pursue junkyards. I don't know if you're aware of that. Very rarely do we visit a junkyard because junkyards have no stories. People have stories, cars in their garage, junkyards, it's just inventory. But places like this are going away. I mean, that's I-85, one of the busiest traveled roads in the United States. We're within uh, just a few feet of the interstate. This land is gonna become so valuable that somebody's gonna come along and offer Estes money and he's gonna sell it and all these cars will be scrapped. It's, it's probably important to visit places like this if for no other reason than to kind of just pay respect to the cars that are here Maybe take photos that you can, you know, show your friends and maybe blow them up and make artwork for your den out of them or something. But, uh, you know, I don't care for junkyards, but once in a while you just have to do it.